I get questioned all the time, like, why do you all want to do a church? You know, you got these places like, I like to just be very honest, Saddleback Community, they got like 20,000 people and nine Starbucks coffee places. <laughs> uh, Mariner's Church, you got my good friend uh, in Irvine, Jensen Franklin, we've traveled the world with them for 20 years. My good friend, um, uh, all the people from Hillsong, I've been running with Brian Houston for 25 years. We've probably done no less than 100 conferences together. You know, Tim, why do you, why did you pick some area that we never even heard of, Placentia, <laughs> right? And then go, you know, rent a house and start in your house. Because I felt God told us to. And there's a difference between a good idea and a God idea. And when God, watch, guides, he provides. Now let me tell you something. If you blew a dog whistle today, like what? The cats won't come. <laughs> you blow a whistle in the spirit for those of us that really want to know him and be kingdom people and take over the world. Clap your hands. That's what, that's what we're creating here. Clap when you like that. I travel the world. I don't have to be a lead pastor of a church with amazing people like Pastor Stefan, who has his master's degree from Claremont, Pastor Page, who just, just, whoa. And people like Joseph Chestnut, Lee Worsh. Give him a clap. He's awesome. All the worship team, Joseph and Joseph, the camera guys, people. Look at me. We didn't have to do this at this stage. But it's doggone working. How many of you, like, almost were not going to church for a while, and now the congregation has brought you in? Lift your hands. Do you see? Do you see what's happening? When I get an Oprah Winfrey saying to me, you make God make sense to me. This, this now, the God you're talking about, this is making some sense. So this is what we're up to. You understand? This is what we're up to. And do not despise small beginnings. Don't just go like, and I came to his church and I had to sit and my booty hurt. <laughs> so? So? Get in here when it's small and tight and feisty. Are you with me? And let's do some Jesus stuff. Clap your hands at the end of the night. Be a crusader. Come on. I'm a crusader. We've been teaching on the presence of God. And uh, this will be our last message on this series. I've been reading a book that's really been changing my life. It's by Eugene Peterson. It's called a long obedience in the same direction. And it's about how the world has become a bunch of quitters. I want you to hear me. We start a diet, it's so easy to what? Come on, somebody. We start a church, it's so easy to what? You get in a relationship, it's so easy to what? You decide... You know, at the end of December, woo, 2019 is going to be my year, girl. <laughs> you quit by January the 18th. <laughs> so, in his book, he says that the world has become a bunch of quitters. You better hear me. You know the thing I found by being a pastor now? is the church is full of a lot of quitters. Because a lot of people came to me when we first started this, like, I will die for you. I will lay it on the tracks for you. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I will catch a grenade for you. I will lay out a blade for you. <laughs> and I said, Bruno Mars, come on now. You know you're not going to do all that. How many of you 
you Thank God you're not a quitter. Just lift your hands like you're not a quitter. Um, to my friends here, man, you guys, what you guys are doing right now is huge. Uh, the book Think and Grow Rich, the fifth largest book in the history of the world. Uh, these are the guys that are doing the tour, helping with the tour, did the documentary, wrote the book. Could both of you guys stand up, give them a big clap. Give them a big clap. You guys are not it's so easy to quit. And so I did all this research on why people don't quit. And the main thing is, is that you have to have something to believe in that's bigger than you. Because you might quit yourself, but you probably won't quit your kids. You may quit yourself, but you won't quit God if you get to know God. It's good, right? No, but you'll quit yourself. Some of you are wondering when, you, when you're allowed to check in, you know, and check out. And you say, okay, I'm already 40. How many more years until the retirement? There is no retirement in the kingdom of heaven. You may rest for one job, but God's going to give you another job. It's really the truth. Whether I see you at Target, Walmart, you know how they got the greeters? Come on, somebody. The LA Mission. You're going to be somewhere. Because soon you're going to get tired of fiddling around in the garage and your wife's going to get tired of you fiddling around in the garage. <laughs> That's why the Bible says that the righteous are like a palm tree and they will still bear fruit in their old age. You're going to prosper in your 50s. You're going to prosper in your 60s. You're going to prosper in your 70s. You're going to prosper in your 80s. You're going to prosper in your 90s. Clap your hands like you're going to prosper. My mother's right there. My mother's right there. She's almost 89 years of age, and she's still prospering. At 89 years of age, and prospering. Pastor Paige is already 30. You're still prospering. I knew you were that. False assumptions about success and reaching our goals according to Eugene Peterson. We're talking about the presence. Many believe that success, success can be done quickly and efficiently after reading a few key books and possibly going to a few key seminars. Let me help you with something. I like Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins likes me. He's the one that told Dog the Bounty Hunter, go see Tim's story. But walking on coals are going to get you some hot feet. <laughs> but you might learn a lot. My friend Ed Milet, Milet, he's one of my best friends. We just talked the other day. He's amazing. You come to a Tim Story meeting like we just did Sunday night in Hollywood, you might get all stirred up. But watch. It's one thing to get inspired. It's another thing to have a revelation drop into your system and that you so touch God, because we're touching about, talking about the presence, that I have to read this quote that's there that I've been saying all around the world, and that is, once you touch the fire, you cannot live in the smoke. Say that. Say, say once you touch the fire, you cannot live in the smoke. Now, the reason some people that you know, not you, but people you know, can just come to church every once in a while to get inspired. Oh, I was inspired. That was very inspiring. Some people even come to me and they go, you are a really good speaker. That was very inspiring. But you, you won't see them for six months. You know what? Because they have never touched the fire. Because once you touch the fire, you don't want to live in the smoke. And once you touch Jesus,
reason you get a revelation, once you feel his presence, once his presence seeps down deep into your soul, clap your hands and you want to be a soul person. Good, right? He says there's a great market for a spiritual experience. Everybody's spiritual now. Has anybody ever heard of Instagram? Look at it. It's all, everybody's saying spiritual thoughts. It's a full moon. Feel okay. Come on, somebody. This is rising. That is dropping. This is coming back up. Don't worry, it's gonna be all right. Come on, somebody. Sage some things. It'll cleanse you. There's going to be a lot of talk. There's a great market for a spiritual experience. Watch. And very little interest, Eugene Peterson says, in establishing a life of commitment to virtue, character, and God's overall plan. So powerful. Tim's story, I just want to feel better. I came to one of your seminars, and I just want you to know. I was down and out. But then, watch, that gift of inspiration came <laughs> from you. Look at me. And I was so inspired. Okay, that's cool. But did you get committed? Are you now going to live this life and go from glory to glory? And June becomes better? And July becomes better, and August becomes better, and September becomes better, and October becomes better, and November becomes better. Clap your hands like that's when you're ready in life. There's a great market for a religious experience and very little interest in establishing a life of commitment to virtue, character, and God's overall plan. One of my close friends said something really stupid to me. Who's ever had somebody say something that wasn't that smart? And I almost want to call him out because it was that dumb. And he said to me, how does it feel to speak on this platform with all these other speakers knowing that they're worth at least 10 times more than you are? That's what he said. I think that's a stupid statement. <laughs> and he said, does it make you feel bad that they have that kind of uh, power? So I said, I'm going to school him. <laughs> Come on. So a little of my Jesus came out and a little bit of my comfort came out. It was like a mixture of Jesus and comfort. And I said, that's interesting. It depends on how you see value. So I guess you're telling me because they have airplanes that they're more important or because their, their, their thing is going after a lot of money, that that makes them more valuable? I said, so where would you put Mother Teresa in this conversation? Where, where would you put Nelson Mandela, who spent 26 years in prison, to set people free. Where would you put him in that conversation? See, I gave my life to change people. I was bringing in millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars a year and taking a small salary that my own board would say, Tim, this is unfair. I said, I never did it for the money. And can I tell you something? God blesses what he possesses. No wonder my life is so full of blessings, of friends, of peace. Come on, somebody. Of people who give life back to the Clap your hands. That's wealth. Wealth is being a mother when you don't feel like being a mother. 
Wealth is being a father when you don't feel like being a father. Wealth is like getting back up after somebody stabbed you in the back and twisted the knife. Wealth is not what this world is trying to tell me. But you're going to think that unless you get hit by the presence. That's why the Bible says, not many noble are called. It says in my notes, not many noble are called. So what does that mean? Did God call dunces? No. <laughs> God calls people, listen to me, that are shaky. Wow. <laughs> this is so powerful. Don't ever forget this statement. God calls shaky people to do sturdy projects. Yes. <laughs> Say that loud. Calls shaky people to do sturdy projects. Hey. Oh yeah, because they know they need God. Abram, he had his problems. He had a little lion problem. He said, "This is not my wife. It's my sister." <laughs> Moses killed a man. Not a good way to get on Christian TV. <laughs> Rahab was a prostitute. Come on, stick with me. Peter had a cussing problem and an anger problem. Judas what, what, was, what, what, was a kleptomaniac. John was a chion. Come on, somebody, a crybaby for those Latin people. God calls shaky people to do sturdy projects because those of us that have been shaky, we know we need God's presence or we all in trouble. Clap your hands and shout. Come on, how many of you want to need his presence? See, some people, it's okay to maybe get his presence. Oh, I was there. It was good. He was a little emotional. It was a little emotional. But it was good. You're missing it here. If that's how you think. When somebody touches him, the Apostle Paul says, I gotta apprehend him who apprehended me. I gotta tag him who tagged me. I gotta touch him who touched me. He says, I am crucified with Christ, but nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ who liveth in me. How did he get into this intense place? Because he experienced. presence commitment virtue, character God's overall plan you know what we're going to build here at the congregation we're going to help you with the overall plan and when you finally die at 120 and I do your funeral even though I'll be 140 <laughs> I'm going to send you out with a bang I gotta make a few things up. <laughs> I'll do it. We are committed to you at this church to build you in the area of character, build you in your God vision, build you in your family vision, build you and teach you that your daughter can come back, your son can come back, your nephew can come back, your nieces can come back. Clap your hands and shout that God can build and restore every single part of your life. That's what we are committed to. Are you listening to? We may, we may never have seven Starbucks. But you're going to feel his presence. I gotta keep taking that medicine. <laughs> Gore Vidal says, I've analyzed today's people and today's passion. What people are looking for is the immediate. They want the casual spiritual experience. Just give it to me casual. I don't want it too deep. Just Hold them. It's like you're ordering your Jesus experience at Starbucks. 
<laughs> Hold this and then do that and then three pumps of that and then unpump that. Oh, I liked it. Oh, I liked it. You think Jesus was walking around on the earth like he was American Idol to see if everybody liked what he did? What has church become? Yeah. Oh, I like Joe Osteen. No, I don't. No, he doesn't talk. But I do like his wife, Victoria. Oh, I like, mm -hmm. but I like, mm -hmm. do you think Jesus was going around, you know, healing people and then people would go like, I give that a seven. Come on, somebody. And then, he, and then he, he goes to the other person. I'll give that a nine. Remember that he spat in that one person's eye, and then they, whoo, I'll give that a one. He could spin. <laughs> when you get Jesus inside you, you're going to become radical. Yes. You're going to become unusual. Come on, somebody. You, you, you're going to become original. Businesses are going to start popping out of you. Favor is going to start popping out of you. Courage is going to start popping out of you. Wealth is going to start popping out of you. Strength is going to start popping out of you. Vitality is going to start popping out of you. Somebody clap their hands and shout like you want an experience. There, were, there are two things according to Peterson that will help us with this long obedience in the same direction. Say long obedience, long obedience. in the same direction. Same direction. Now, I'm saying this. I'm saying this to my mother and to my to my sister, and my sister who's watching, because we're we're down to just us, right? All the other ones died. We started with seven, and we got what four left. Okay. For real. So I'm so I'm saying to you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm never retiring from being a Jesus person. Yeah. I hosted this thing the other night for uh, human trafficking, the big one, the one of the biggest in the world, and I hosted it. And all these celebrities were there, and these city officials came up to me. And one guy says, man, I've been knowing you for years. Number one, did you freeze yourself? Because you still look the same. <laughs> and number two, he says, Tim, even as you were talking at this event, he says, I felt God. <laughs> to me, that's wealth. Yeah. Yeah. To come in in his presence and shift it. An atmosphere. So Peter says, says there's, there's two things we need. We need discipleship. Isn't that what we're doing in this church? Discipleship, right? Discipleship means to become a, an apprentice in the ways and the plans of Jesus. I want you to be an apprentice in the ways and the plans of Jesus. You don't even have to get a wristband that says what? WW what? what Remember that was a long time ago? What would Jesus do? You don't, you, don't, you don't even have to get that. But I want you to think that. I want you to become a disciple in the ways of Jesus in June. A disciple in the ways of Jesus in July. A disciple in the ways of Jesus in August. I'm not talking about being perfect. Because could you imagine the disciples were with Jesus for three and a half years and they were still shaky. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm not asking for perfection right now. Right. I'm looking for you getting better. Right. So good, right? right? I mean, Peter gets all mad. He's got like shoot knot right here, shoot knights with him. <laughs> and Peter whoosh, cuts a guy's ear off. That's not good. <laughs> Judas is stealing Louis Vuitton purses. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Thomas is doubting, like, give me a tithe and all. <laughs> Somebody say, good teaching. So you want to be a disciple? Say, disciple. disciple. But 
I like what Eugene Peterson says, Pastor Stefan. He says, we need to become pilgrims. See, some of you are living this life like this is the end. I believe in eating healthy. I believe in, I believe in doing what you can to reverse aging. Come on, people. Right, doctor? You got me juicing and everything? Doctor, stand up so you can see how we handle this before. Give him a clap. How old are you now? 81. 81. Sit down with two hands. Sit down with two hands. He comes to me because he, we've been friends, how many years? 25 years? Pastor Tim, I love you, but we must fix your gut. That was love. Thank you. For that. <laughs> no more fast food. Oh my God, don't be so harsh. <laughs> and then, then I got Joseph Chestnut. He's in his twenties. Make me work out like I'm 22. <laughs> then I got Chance over there. Got me on all kinds of stuff. Oh my God, God help me. Okay, I believe in. I believe this. I believe in all this stuff. But we have to understand that we, we are biblical pilgrims headed somewhere. Yeah. Headed with this God plan as pilgrims passing through. Pilgrims with a purpose. Pilgrims that will leave a legacy. I'm trying to tell you, your life is about to be so beautiful and powerful that you will leave a legacy that will not be a whisper. It will be an echo. Somebody clap your hands and shout like you. Come on, people. Do you want to leave a legacy? So I've been doing all this research on uh, this whole thing, the crowd of great crowd of witnesses. And for us, we have this great cloud of witnesses, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says. They're all around us, right? And it says, even Jesus himself did not consider his own self selfishly. But he ran his journey for us. That's so powerful. We must look away from the natural realm. Tim's story. <laughs> you know how easy it would be to just go like, Okay, that was great, being the church guy. That was awesome. But now, I'm up to other things. Who's ever been tempted to be up to other things besides just church? Just lift your hands. Are you aligned in the church? <laughs> Look away from the natural realm. Say natural realm. You know the challenge? is that you are getting 50,000 outside thoughts a day if you leave the house. If you leave the house, don't leave the house, you'll probably get 90,000 because you're watching TV the whole time. What? So buy this, do that, do this. Get some Rogaine, come on somebody. Get some extensions, come on somebody. Get a, get a my pillow. Get a, get a. The other day I was trying to sleep and my neck was hurting. And I said, there's something wrong with this pillow. So I told my assistant, I said, you got to look at this pillow. And she says, it, it, it's dead. And I said, but it's a my pillow. She goes, but it's a dead my pillow. <laughs> but why did I get it? Because I saw the commercial so much. <laughs> my pillow. Dog. I said, I want to be happy like that guy. <laughs> it is good. I bought it. Because they advertised it. So you're getting 50,000 advertisements coming to your mind a day. Do this. You should be more. You should be skinnier. You should be this. You should be that. You should be that. You should be more rich. You should do this. You should be on your grind. Get off your grind. Get back on your grind. Don't be on your grind. Be on your grind some more. Come on, somebody. Don't ever take a day off. Don't take Saturday off. I'm, oh, you people are lazy. That are not taking, that, 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 if you take a day off, the work Sunday, you, you, you get all these thoughts. Wow. The 
Bible says, look away from the natural realm. already changed. Clap your hands and shout. Elias, wave at me. Stand up real, real fast. Give Elias a big clap. Good. The number one cornerback in the nation. The number one cornerback high school in the nation. Into Jesus. I was praying for him this morning. No, for real, I was praying for I was praying for your son this morning. Because he's gonna have so much favor on him. You, you, you're gonna be so quick, they don't know what hit him. Do you know that do you know that, that God can hit your business with supernatural favor? He can hit your singleness with supernatural favor. Come on, people. He can hit your household with supernatural favor. He can hit the, he can hit every part of your life with supernatural favor, which is his presence. But don't you ever forget, God blesses what he possesses. Oh, I gotta go there, I guess. Come on. I just don't know what's going on. I just feel like I need more time with you, Tim Story. No. Mm -mm. That's not what you need. Maybe a little conversation here and there. We could push each other's buttons. But when you get into this discipleship thing, that's why we have home fellowship groups. We're discipling you. So we have church every Sunday. We're discipling you. So we have a website where you can watch the sermons over and over again. We're discipling you. Look at me. When you start to get into this world of being a disciple of Christ, I'm going to tell you what happens. You start to naturally turn away from the realm of how the world thinks. The world is so silly of what they think is popular. So good. I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you something. I do like some of the silly stuff that's out there. Like, there's a group called Amigos. I actually like them. They got good beats. I don't like all the lyrics. But they're just playing a song, and then all of a sudden the guy goes, Mama! So I asked him, but why did he say that? He goes, he just does. <laughs> He's just singing it. And he goes, Mama! I go, well, why, did, why did he do that? Watch it on the James Cordon when he's in the car. Amigos, he just starts screaming, Mama. <laughs> Getting into God will help you to look away from the natural realm. We must fasten our gaze onto Jesus. Who birthed faith within us. Can you take the last few minutes of this? Yeah. He birthed faith in you. 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 And faith is a presence. He birthed a faith presence in you. You have a birth presence inside of you. Clap your hands like you have a birth presence in you. Come on, people. That's why when people try to criticize you, that's why when people try to hold you back, that's why when people try to put things on top of you, there is a faith presence inside you to start to rise up and go, no devil. I don't think so. So powerful. There's a faith presence in you. But it's a seed. It's a seed. That needs to be watered. It's a seed that needs to be cultivated. Well, I went to this convention and I got some super sauce, and then I went over there and I got some sprinkles. Have you ever heard of? Have you ever heard of? Have you ever heard of? And then, oh, he can, oh, this guy. 
Then she, oh, she got into my emotion to the 19th level. And then, <laughs> I like all my motivational friends. I'm on the Think and Grow Rich tour, aren't I, guys? Nod your heads. I was on the Steve Harvey tour, nod your heads. I, I, I toured with Oprah Winfrey. I, I, I was on Steve Harvey live every, every Monday. I, I, I'm still going to motivate. But once you get the seed, come on, come on, somebody, a faith inside you, and that thing starts to grow. You start to get big on the inside. You're like, whoa. Look at me. You're like, I ain't going to be poor no more. Come on, somebody. I ain't going to be broke. I ain't even gonna, I'm not even going to complain. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to speak words of faith, even though things are happening bad in my house. I'm going to speak life. I'm going to speak life. I'm going to speak life. Clap your hands because you have birth faith on your inside. Clap your hands. I got four minutes left in time. Like Come on, people. I'm trying to get you to stir this up in you. You have a plan, say plan. plan. You need his presence, say presence. presence. You need to rely on his power, say power. power. And then the vision will come true. When you got the plan and the presence and the power, the vision will always come true. Even if you're goofy, the vision is probably still going to happen. Because it's not all about you. Let me quote my friend T.D. Jakes. Grace fills in the gaps. He said, I have worked with some lazy people. I have known some lazy people. I have been around some lazy people, but yet they prospered because grace fills in the gaps. No, 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 no. See, you all know you got some stuff that you never even ordered from Santa Claus. <laughs> I remember the first time Oprah Winfrey interviewed me. It was so surreal because I was so used to growing up on Oprah, and she was she was reading my book, and she said, "Ooh, as it says in page eighty-nine. Ooh, this is so good. As it says in page one hundred and one. I felt like Dorothy <laughs> from The Wizard of Oz. I may need to go back to Kansas." <laughs> This is overwhelming. <laughs> no, no, no. For I have not seen. Either has not heard. Neither has it even entered in your heart. We've got to have prepared for them that love you. Say plan, plan. Presence, presence, power, power. Vision. vision. So we're done. So I, I need God's plan. How do I get that? In his presence. Yeah, right. I need his presence. How do I get his presence? In his presence. Yeah. I need his power. Where do I get the power? In his presence. 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 Would you feel today in this tight little schoolroom? Yes. Come on. Yeah. I love God, man. You changed my life, God. I gotta tell you one thing, and then I'm done. I'm speaking at this conference in Miami. A lot of speakers that some faith people would know who they are. It was a big old conference. And the pastor says to me, there's a guy from Africa, from Ghana. This brother, he thinks he's got a word from God from you. And, and that always makes me leery because I, I don't want people just telling me things that are silly. So he goes, Tim, I know how you are. He goes, but this guy, this guy just told me things about you. There's no way he can know. So I go, okay. That comes in the room, watch this. this. This is 10 years ago. He says, Tim Story. 
if you're from Ghana. If I didn't do it perfect, it was close. <laughs> I've spoken there. That's close. Tim Story. <laughs> you have done many powerful things in your day, but your life is drastically changing. Somebody's talked like that. It was just me. Him and the pastor, he, he had all that energy. <laughs> and what he basically said, he said, the old Tim story is going to die. You won't, he said, you won't even have an appetite to have to be the best. The old Tim story is going to die. But I didn't even know it was going to be through some pain and hardships <laughs> and a breakup. Why couldn't I just, you know, push a button and then I decreased? <laughs> and then there will be people that say, Tim's story is dead. That's what he said. And that's what happened to people. They said, Oh, didn't he to do all the conferences? How come? I'm the one that did, I stepped out. I didn't want to. I, I didn't want to do religious TV. What, we need more people on religious TV. So I walked away from all of it. But there were, there were some fools who would say, oh, he, I thought, he went Hollywood. Mm, uh -huh. he, but this guy was right. He said, there will be some people. So what? Wow, this is powerful, right? He said, but the new Tim story will arrive. And he will be a man of the people. He says, you will love the broken like never before. No, no, and that's what happened. Ah. Don't go to 7-Eleven with me if you're in a hurry. <laughs> everybody, everybody knows me, knows it's true, because I'm going to help the guy that's asking for the money. And it's going to irritate some of y'all, because you're busy. You're busy people. Even the kid outside, the other 7 the other day, he comes up to me and he goes, Mr. Story, I'm sorry I, know I let you down. I'm, I'm back on drugs. I said, you let me down, you're still alive. He goes, do that thing again where you made my chest feel better. He says, well, can you do the prayer again where you made my chest feel better? Power of God hit that kid. So what that, what that, what that man from Ghana said happened. The old Tim Story will die. Someone said to me the other day, what is next for you? There's so many things happening. What is next? I said, I'm just okay living now. Yeah. Why are you always thinking next when you get to live now? You live it in the now that you thought about next. Yeah. The things you prayed about happen now. Yeah. I'm done speaking. Clap <laughs>